Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys my entire summer perfume collection, which ones are my favorite, which ones I'm not as obsessed with, and before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe down below if you like these types of videos. Fragrance is what this channel is all about. I'm trying to start off by doing one video a week right now on Wednesdays, and then if I feel like I want to do more, maybe in the future I'll move to two videos a week. If you are interested, my main channel as well as my Instagram and Twitter are linked in the description box, and let's just go ahead and get into the perfumes. So I guess let's start off with with the most recent perfume to my collection, and that is Zaro Wanted Girl Tonic. I've heard a lot of people talk about the Wanted Girl perfume here on YouTube, and it is like a more sweet gourmand perfume, I believe, from what I've heard. This is the tonic version. This one is definitely a very fresh, light, summery scent. The main notes that I pick up in this in the beginning are definitely that sour kind of kiwi note with the green bamboo note. I believe bamboo is listed as one of the most prominent notes in this perfume if you look on Fragrantica, and I do get that, but I also get that fruity element to it. There's acai berry and kiwi in this, but once this perfume starts to dry down, you don't get as much of that like tangy kiwi. It gets a little bit more sweet, but you still have that fresh element to it. And it really starts to remind me of Daisy by Marc Jacobs, Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, even a little bit of the DKNY Apple perfume, the Be Delicious. It's just a very likable, kind of typical, fresh, fruity summer scent. And I do think it's really nice, but I don't know that I'll be keeping this one just because it is a little bit similar to other perfumes that I have. And it does have a little bit of a uniqueness to it in that opening, but once it dries down, it really just smells like a lot of other perfumes out there. So yeah, even though I think this is a really pretty scent, it's probably one that I'm gonna be selling just because I feel like it's similar to other perfumes, but I think that a lot of people would really like this. I just don't know that it's enough for me to keep in my collection. Let's talk about one that I do really love, and I feel like this is a staple in my collection. This is Shiseido Zen. This is a perfume that I heard Demi Rawling talk about years ago, and she really intrigued me to want to buy this perfume. This to me is like, a Chanel vibe perfume. It is definitely a lot more affordable than Chanel. It has a pretty strong patchouli note, but it's not like a dirty patchouli. You just get it mixed in with these like fruity notes. There's pineapple and grapefruit in this. I believe there's even some like pine or something like that in this perfume, although I don't get that too much. It's blended really nicely and it does have just like this fruity, patchouli scent to it, but it's not uh, typical. It's not something that I feel like everyone has. I feel like it's a little bit more unique, but it's still really likable. It's definitely an elegant kind of like mature perfume. Like I said, it kind of reminds me of Chanel and it doesn't smell super young or anything like that. It's a little bit more mature than some fruity patchoulis out there, but it's still very wearable and just like feminine. I love wearing this type of a perfume to like a bridal shower or a brunch. I would even wear it to a wedding. It's just a very pretty elegant perfume. Let's move on to a real cheapie. And this one is more along the lines of a suntan, kind of warm, salty summer fragrance. This is H&M Sunray. This is literally a $6 perfume if you get this little 20 ml bottle. And I would say this has pretty average performance. It's better than some celebrity perfumes I have tried, but it's also not phenomenal. I wouldn't say it's up there with like some of the really good designer perfumes that have great longevity, but it's pretty average, it's pretty good. If you look on Fragrantica and online, this perfume is one of their one note fragrances, I believe, and apparently it just has solar notes in it. But if I were to guess, what the notes are in this. I would probably say that it has some salty notes, some coconut, maybe some frangipani, uh, like white tropical florals. Those are really the notes that I get from this, if I'm just guessing. And it really smells like a beautiful summer fragrance. I've heard that this is a dupe for Tom Ford Eau de Soleil Blanc, so if that is the case, I haven't smelled the original, 
but if it is a dupe that's amazing for the price and it definitely has that vibe to it that I would picture the Tom Ford one to have. It's just a very nice summery beachy fragrance, but it's not a typical like coconut bath and body work spray. It's a little bit more sophisticated than that. So let's talk about some dossier perfumes. This video isn't sponsored by them or anything, although I have done a few sponsored videos with them on my main channel. Since I started my own fragrance channel here, I'm still quite small. I've only done a few videos, so I haven't worked with any companies yet, but I'm I'm talking about these perfumes because I genuinely like them and they're a part of my summer perfume collection. So the first one is the Aquatic Peony scent and this is a dupe for Aqua de Joya. And then we have the Oriental Vetiver, which is a dupe for Bald the Freak by Byredo. And I was super excited when I got this one. It definitely smells like the Byredo one. I've smelled that one in store. And this is just such a beautiful, fresh, woody, citric, clean kind of a scent. The notes of this are actually on the bottle, so I'll just go ahead and read these. I can put the Fragrantica notes up on the screen for these as well, since I'm doing it with all the other perfumes, but the top notes of this are Bergamot, Lemon, Buchu. The middle notes are Orange Blossom, Marigold, and Violet, and the base notes are Vetiver, Amber, and Cedarwood. I really pull like the Bergamot, the Orange Blossom, the Vetiver from this perfume. It's just a beautiful, clean, fresh, woody fragrance, and it's so beautiful for the spring and summertime, but this could also be like a signature scent that you wear year round. In my opinion, this would be a really great signature scent. So that is Oriental Vetiver, a dupe for Balde Freak, and then the Aquatic Peony. Really does smell like Aqua de Joya. Just that clean, fresh scent as well, but a little bit more fruity. And it has that mint note in it, which makes it um, really kind of like invigorating to the nose. <laughs> the top notes of this one are mint, black currant, lemon, and aquatic accord. And the middle notes are peony, jasmine, and pink pepper. The base notes are cedar wood and labdomen. Labdim, labdim, labdinum, if I can speak. I definitely do get the aquatic note in this one as well. Very fresh and clean also, but just in a different way than the other one. Then we have a really popular one. This is Miami Glow by Jennifer Lopez. A lot of people have talked about this for years as it being like a really, really great summer scent. This is definitely a very, very, very summery scent. It has that feel to it. I wouldn't wear this any other time of year. That being said, I don't find this to be a, what you would picture, tropical fruity coconut type of perfume. It does have that fruity element. It has coconut in it, but it's in a different way because it's such a fresh, clean, soapy scent that it's not as sweet as a lot of those perfumes would usually be. It's a little bit more unique. You definitely get the passion fruit in this. It has a very, like I said, clean, soapy scent to it. And that's why when I first smelled this perfume, I was a little bit thrown off by it because it wasn't what I was expecting. But once I kind of warmed up to it, I really fell in love with this fragrance. The lasting power and projection on this is absolutely phenomenal. A lot better than a lot of designer perfumes that I own. This one is really, really great on performance. You get the coconut from this as well, but it's not overpoweringly synthetic coconut. It really smells mainly like a passion fruit coconut soap. That's what I kind of get from this. Let's grab my Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo, but this is the EDT version, not the typical EDP version that most people talk about. This one is very light and fresh and green. It doesn't have that strong toffee patchouli that you get in the EDP. This one is much more green. It has, I believe, an orchid note in it. It has a very strong pear note. The pear is honestly what I get from this the most. It's very pear heavy and it has that green note to it. It's a little sweet, but not overly sweet at all. It's just a really, really pretty spring and summer fragrance. And honestly, I really, really love this one. It's one of my favorite scents, but I don't find that the performance on this is super great. And these days, if I'm gonna wear a perfume over a body spray, it's usually gonna be one that has a little bit better performance. Let's grab my Escada. This is Turquoise Summer, and I talked about this in my last video, the one that I did about perfumes I would repurchase and ones I wouldn't. I said that I wouldn't repurchase this perfume, and the reason is just because there are so many Escadas that smell like this. I would just try a different Escada, honestly. 
it's really nice it has a very tropical fruity scent to it and it does have a pretty strong like soapy note it's very synthetic but it is very nice if you like a clean tropical fruity scent it's very summery but yeah i wouldn't repurchase this because i actually think i prefer some of the other escadas that i've smelled now over this one it's really intense it's it's very strong but it does have good performance so if you are looking for a perfume like this and you're going on a vacation or something this is a good one it's just not my favorite so i want to really quickly mention my flower bomb edt by victor and rolf this is discontinued and you can't get it anymore but to me it is the summer version of the original flower bomb edp a lot of people haven't heard about this one because it is discontinued and you can't find it but it is a little bit more light and citric than flower bomb it's a little bit more like fruity it has that tangerine note in there it has pink pepper and this is honestly one of my favorite perfumes on planet earth it's probably in my like top two or three but you can't get it anymore so i don't want to talk about it for too long this is just to me the summer version of flower bomb like i said it's the eau de toilette not the eau de parfum let's go over some more of my celebrity perfumes and then we'll talk about the last couple that i have but i have um rihanna rebel fleur and i would say the main thing that makes this a summer perfume is that coconut note it has that really warm delicious uh coconut note but not in a sweet synthetic way it has like a deep element to it where it's like sexy and dark kind of mysterious this does not smell like a celebrity perfume or what i would picture a celebrity perfume to smell like it's definitely a summer night out perfume and that's what i would wear this for going out for dinner or having a girls night or something like that in the summertime. It really has an intoxicating, like addicting element to it. Like if you smell this on someone, you're probably going to be in love with them. <laughs> yeah, it smells really, really good and it's a great summer night perfume. And then we have Mambo by Liz Claiborne. This is a little bit more recent to my collection and I'm super excited to wear this this summer. This has notes of ginger, mango what else is in here i'm not sure but it has some floral notes in there too and it smells like a really fresh pretty spring summer scent honestly it's nothing groundbreaking but the reason i like this one is because it gives me kind of like that 90s vibe this perfume i'm pretty sure is from the 90s or early 2000s you can kind of tell by the bottle i don't love the bottle a lot of these bottles i don't like but you know, it's more about the fragrance to me. This one is super, super cheap. You can find it on FragranceNet or other places for a really affordable price. It reminds me of like the early 2000s. Like I feel like I'm in Gilmore Girls when I wear this. I don't know, something about it gives me that kind of nostalgic feeling even though I haven't smelled this that I know of before. I just, I'm really excited about wearing this one this summer because it's just a really pretty girly summer scent and i think it would be a compliment getter the next one is elizabeth arden green tea and this is also another really popular one that a lot of people know about this is another one that doesn't have great performance i really have to overspray, and that's why i don't reach for it that often but i love the scent so so much and it's so like different from other fragrances that i have just with that tea note that i'll probably never get rid of it it just smells like clean and fresh but not in an overpowering way it has that tea note to it it honestly smells like if you walked into like a pretty boutique where there's lots of light colored clothing like white and blush pink and it's very girly and clean feeling i would would think that this would smell like that if that makes any sense at all but yeah i really like elizabeth arden green tea and then let's talk about two minis that i have just because i feel like they deserve a spot in this video since they are summer perfumes in my collection first one is versace crystal noir i'm definitely going to need to get a bottle of this one because it's honestly one of my favorite summer perfumes that I've ever smelled. It has a masculine kind of edge to it, but not in an intense, deep, dark way. It really just smells like a soft, clean coconut with a little bit of a spicy, peppery undertone, but that doesn't come through overly strong. This is another compliment getter where people just like it. It smells nice. It's not overpowering, but it has that kind of unisex vibe to it. I know people have described it as like a man on the beach, um, but I do find it quite feminine. I do think it's a summery coconut, but not in an overly tropical synthetic way. Again, a lot of these coconuts that I have, they're not overly synthetic in like a foodie way. I wish I could describe it better, but the other travel size that I have here is Illuminaire Intensa by Vince Camuto. Let's refresh my memory. Another very clean, fresh scent. It actually reminds me of the green tea one, but a little bit stronger and a little bit more 
floral maybe. It's a little bit powdery, but nothing crazy. I don't think it's anything unique, but I think it's nice. This video is getting really long because I can't seem to shut up. I have my Jo Malone Blackberry in Bay and I had to mention this because to me, this is more of a spring summer perfume, but I think you could wear this year round. I think it's really nice in the fall as well because it has this like crisp element to it. It really does smell like fresh blackberries and bay leaves. It has, um, I believe a grapefruit note in here as well as like some cedar wood in the base. And so it just smells very natural. It's just a really unique, beautiful scent. And I think it could be a signature scent. I think it's one of those perfumes that I would picture someone wearing that isn't really into perfume, but this is just like the only perfume they own but in a unique way. It's very unique and unlike anything else that I have. So that is Jo Malone Blackberry and Bay. Another perfume here that I just recently picked up is this Fig Du Foray. I don't know how to say that. This is the hair and body mist, but I know you can get the perfume version of this. It's one of those um, scents that you can pick up at Urban Outfitters. They have it online but I'm not sure if it's available right now because they do kind of switch them out. So you might have to get this on Amazon, but I found this at TJ Maxx. They have a few different ones of this uh, line of perfumes right now at TJ Maxx and Marshalls, floral, uh, fruity scent. But in the dry down, it actually reminds me a lot of Gucci 2 Eau de Parfum. That perfume is discontinued and I know it's like one of Kathleen Light's favorite perfumes. If you guys have been looking to get that one, maybe try this out because to me, it smells very, very similar in the dry down. In the opening, the Gucci one has more of that spicy note that comes from the cassia leaf. This one does not have that as much, but once they dry down, it really reminds me of that Gucci one and it's super affordable. So if you've been wanting to try that out, I would say pick this one up and just see. It's interesting though, because they have the exact same color juice, this like lavender juice. This is a nice uh, fragrance. I just have the Gucci one already, so I probably won't keep this one, but I just wanted to mention that I feel like it's kind of a dupe for that one. Then we have Layered First Kiss. To me, this is definitely a spring summer perfume. I really, really like this one, but it gives my husband a headache. The original Delina that I have in a sample also gives him a headache, but to me, this one is a lot more intense. It has a stronger nutmeg note and just a stronger, more kind of sour note in it than the Delina does. I think Delina is softer. I would say the projection, lasting power and performance and all of that is very, very similar on these two. I would say it's pretty much the same as Delina but it is a little bit more stronger in that like sour tangy note. I don't mind it. I think it smells really nice, but I think Delina is more of a compliment getter. So I'd rather have that in my collection and I wouldn't repurchase First Kiss, but I do think it is really close to Delina. But yeah, that's definitely spring and summer for me. And then I just want to mention the body sprays that I have really quickly, just because I only have a couple that I feel like are really summery. The first one is Victoria's Secret Bombshell. Love, love, love this scent. I'll probably get it in a perfume eventually. It's just that fresh, citrusy, fruity scent that really is just so feminine. To me, it doesn't smell like everything else. And I know that some people might think it's very basic. But I actually really, really love Bombshell. So that is my first one. And then I also have the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Crush. I know that this can be um, more winter for some people and more summer for some people. To me, it's more summery, but I would wear it in the winter as well because it does have that cozy, warm element. This is just a salted caramel pistachio, but it has a tropical element to it. I can't describe it, but it does smell like a summery scent to me. And I just think that it's really addicting and delicious smelling. The last one here is a really old Bath & Body Works spray, but I actually really like the scent of this one. So I keep it even though it's old and discontinued and you can't get it anymore. This is Beach Breeze from Bath & Body Works. I lost the cap of this one. This is definitely an, an aquatic coconut with a little bit of a saltiness in there. Mm, it's delicious though. This is amazing. This smells a lot like at the beach, which is their permanent beachy scent that they have. And that one is really amazing as well. They're very, very similar. So just pick up at the beach if you're wanting something like this. I love it. It smells so good, but yeah, you can't get that one anymore. So I would just repurchase at the beach. That is all of my summer perfumes. I feel like I kind of forgot to say which ones were my favorite after the first couple. I love the Shiseido Zen, like I mentioned in the beginning. I also really love the H&M Sunray. JLo Miami Glow is a staple for me. Jo Malone Blackberry and Bay is honestly like one of my favorite perfumes of all time. I've also really Really, really been loving and been super excited about the oriental vetiver and the dupe for bald freak oh, i love this perfume so 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 much i know i only have this in the travel size but the versace crystal noir 
is definitely one of my favorite uh, summer perfumes I've ever smelled, so I'll need to get a full bottle of that. I'm obsessed with it. And yeah, it's so hard because I do love a lot of these, but um, I have to say, I am really excited to wear Rihanna Rebel Fleur this year. I haven't gotten a chance to wear it in the summertime because I picked it up last fall, but then also Victoria's Secret Bombshell, just a classic staple for me. I love that as a summer perfume. But yeah, I really hope that you guys enjoyed my summer perfume collection. I would love to hear your suggestions for other perfume videos. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe down below. I would really, really love to have you on this fragrance channel. I will see you guys all hopefully in my next video. Bye.